good morning students so today we are going to look uh, two concepts one is about uh, addition of angular momenta and another one is clutch garden coefficient okay these two uh, titles are very very important whenever we study the angular moment of uh, electrons in the atom the addition of angular momenta it clearly says that there must be minimum two electrons there must be minimum two angular momenta so it clearly says and of course we know that uh, the total angular momentum is the sum of orbital angular momentum and the spin angular momentum so we know already so capital j equals n plus s so we'll consider an electron which revolves around the nucleus will produce orbital angular momentum and the magnetic field is in this direction we know already and for the spin of the electron suppose if it spins like this like this in this direction again the magnetic field will be in this direction so this uh, charged particle which revolves around the nucleus will produce a magnetic field so this will produce a magnetic moment exactly this will act as a magnet so we have a magnet we have north pole and south pole magnetic moment exists so exactly this system will exactly will act as a uh, tiny magnet so we know already so the sum of the addition of these two angular momentum orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum is nothing but total angular momentum suppose we are going to consider two electrons two charged particles two electrons which revolve around the nucleus the another electron which is which is not interacting with the previous one then another electron which is uh, revolving around the nucleus now you have to consider two two electrons and two electrons will individually will produce total angular moment so these two uh, electrons which revolve around the nucleus they will act as they will produce magnetic field they will act as exact like tiny magnets so now we are going to have two magnets so exact like uh, so two magnet two magnet means two magnetic field strength of course we know already so two magnetic momenta this is like exact like we have two magnets suppose we consider one magnet and another magnet i am going to keep it nearby if north pole and north pole they will repel each other and north pole and south pole they will attract each other so if the same system also will follow the same same thing here also so we have two magnetic moments and they are non interacting and we are going to keep it nearby and two magnetic momenta will interact with each other either it is parallelly or anti parallel so like attraction and repulsion so they will interact either parallel or anti parallel parallel means we have a maximum magnitude maximum maximum magnitude anti parallel will be minimum magnitude okay so maximum magnitude is given by j1 plus j2 so j1 is the angular momenta produced by the first first electron j2 is the angular momenta produced by the second electron so one is as, as i said one is parallel another one is anti parallel so parallel means we will have maximum momentum maximum angular momenta and anti parallel means we will have minimum angular momentum so this is referred as j1 minus j2 so now we have added these two angular momentum correct we have added this is called additional angular momentum okay so additional angular momentum is nothing but capital j equals capital j1 plus capital j2 so this is additional angular momentum but in quantum mechanics we are going to add the basis of each uh, momentum produced by each electron so basis are added basis for j1 basis for j2 so we are going to couple these two and we will get total couple so earlier we had an uncoupled that is individual uh, angular momenta is called uncoupled one uncoupled one so we are going to add these two we are going to couple these two angular momenta that means that we are going to add the basis basis of each each electron okay producing producing total angular moment okay so coupling in the sense this will be done by only by means of 
projection operator so the projection operator will give the results for coupling this projection operator will have some coefficients usually projector operator will have some coefficients like for example capital psi equals ca psi i summation over ca psi i we know it so capital psi equals c1 psi1 plus c2 psi2 and c1 c2 are coefficients psi1 psi2 are basis so we know it this is exactly similar to this so coupling will be done by means of projection operator and projection operator will have some coefficients these coefficients are called klebsch-cordon coefficients okay so we are going to look into today about the klebsch-cordon coefficient before that we are going to have the additional angular momentum okay so we are going to add uh, two angular momentum j1 plus j2 through some basis we will get uh, some values these values are nothing but klebsch-cordon coefficients klebsch-cordon coefficients will be always real values okay so they will have no complex numbers no complex values so we have only real values okay one second one suppose if we make uh, the klebsch-cordon coefficients into uh, matrix elements and this will be surely a unitary transformation a unitary matrix so as i said earlier just now that is coupling uncoupled to couple correct uncoupling of each individual magnetic momenta will be added we will get a coupling momentum okay so this will be done through by means of as i said by means of projection operator okay so now uh, as i said this uh, matrix elements of uh, klebsch-cordon coefficients will give you unitary matrix so earlier we studied somewhere else in unitary matrix can you remember this is about the uh, pictures so when we convert from one picture into another picture we will be using only unitary transformation unitary matrix suppose we want to convert from heisenberg picture into schrodinger picture we will have to use unitary transformation here also we are going to use the unitary transformation so unitary transformation from uncoupled individual states to coupled states so this is what we are going to learn okay so this will not only applicable for two electrons but many electrons this will be applicable for many electrons suppose we consider three electrons j1 j2 j3 okay so j1 stands for uh, the magnetic moment of the first electron j2 stands for the magnetic moment of the second electron j3 stands for the total magnetic moment of the third electron suppose we are going to add these three so the procedure is first we will have to add two j1 and j2 the resultant will be j12 then we will keep it as j3 as now you are going to add these two j12 plus j3 then after that we are going to add 1 and 3 we will get the resultant as 1 3 so j13 leave j2 as separate now you are going to add resultant with j2 so j13 plus j2 after that we are going to add j2 and 3 so j2 and j3 so now the resultant will be j23 leaving j1 out now you add these two so j1 and j2 j3 so this will be the pro the process will be something like this okay so in this class we are going to uh, discuss the addition of angular moment torch very important which is the base for clutch carbon coefficients okay which we are going to get uh, later so this is uh, very important in the studies of atomic spectrum structure of nuclei structure of the atom nuclear uh, molecular physics and so on okay so we know that already the capital j equals capital l plus capital s so total uh, angular moment is sum of orbital angular moment of two electrons and the spin orbital angular moment of the same electron okay so we know already and as i said when you have two magnetic momenta either it will be parallel and anti parallel okay the magnitude of the sum of the two angular momentum vectors can have any value ranging from sum of their magnitudes this is sum of their magnitudes and the difference of their magnitudes with the modulus so j1 minus j2 so either sometimes it will be j1 will be greater than the top j2 sometimes j2 will be greater than the top j1 so that's why it is it is uh, 
denoted as modulus okay is it okay so this is called j max and this will be your j minus your j lies between j max and j min okay this is one of the selection rules so remember this is the first selection rule that we are going to see later and another selection rule is nothing but m equals m1 plus m2 m small m stands for small n stands for magnetic quantum number for the first electron magnetic quantum number for the second electron is nothing but your m2 so your total quantum number magnetic quantum number is nothing but m equals m1 plus m2 so we are going to see these two selection rules okay so another very important thing is your j and m we are talking about only j and m here okay so we have given importance for j and m j will almost be constant so j is constant m alone will vary okay as i said just now we are going to talk about the projection vector correct projection vector projection vector is nothing but j is at equals m s h bar or m h bar which we have already studied okay the component of j is nothing but projection vector so m alone will change j will be kept constant okay m alone will change j will be always kept constant okay so we are going to have two selection rules one is j max which lies between so one is j which lies between j max and j minimum then another selection rule will be m equals m1 plus m2 where m stands for j is at where m1 stands for j1 is at and m m2 goes for j2 is at for two electrons we are going to consider okay is it okay <coughs> now so we have now uh, two angular momenta one is j1 and another one is j2 so they will have basis states as j1 comma m1 and j2 comma m2 so this is the basis basis states for basis for j1 and this is basis for j2 okay so this will be your joint eigen states j1 and m1 joint eigen states simultaneous eigen states correct j1 and j2 since two systems are non interacting we can have the commutator j1 squared comma j2 squared equals 0 okay so we know already this one earlier we studied already now we are going to see this one for two electrons so j1 squared j2 squared equals 0 j1 squared j1 is at equal to 0 j2 squared j1 is at equal to 0 commutator j2 j1 is at comma j2 is at equal to 0 it means that they mutually commuting observers they mutually they are mutually commuting observers so you can measure mutual okay it means they will have common eigen states simultaneous eigen states so this will have common eigen states okay which is nothing but your jm okay generally okay so here we are talking about j1 and j2 so joint eigen state it will be j1 m1 and j2 m2 so they have two basis states correct similarly for this so they commute uh, hence they will have simultaneous eigen states so all the one will have simultaneous eigen states corresponding quantum numbers will be j1 m1 j2 and m2 okay <coughs> now as i said the total angular momentum is given by j equals j1 plus j2 this is addition of angular momentum and this will have simultaneous eigen states for j1 squared okay and j j1 is at we know it so j1 is at so this is for j1 squared so j2 m2 is a simultaneous eigen vectors for j2 squared and j2 is at so this is for j1 squared and j1 is at and this is for j2 squared and j2 is at so we know already the eigen value equations for j1 squared and j1 is at we know already Correct. So eigen eigen value equation for j1 square, which acts on uh, this ket vector, which will give you eigen value with a ket vector. We know already. Okay. So j1 is at acts on j1 m1 will give you m1 h bar j1 comma m1. So we know already. So this is the eigen value of j1 is at. Similarly, this is the eigen value of j2 square. This is the eigen value of j2 is. At. Okay. And we are talking about two electrons, so two angular momenta. and you have um, the uh, quantum number will be m1 equals j1 to minus j1 so minus j2 plus j so m will vary from minus j2 plus j m2 also will vary from minus j2 plus j okay plus j 
so and therefore the operators j1 square j1 is a j2 square and j2 is a form a complete set of orthonormal set okay simultaneous eigen peaks j1 m1 j2 m2 okay now as i said j1 j1 m1 j2 m2 combined together that will give you j1 m1 j2 m2 which is a product of j1 m1 and j2 m2 okay is it okay so these are all individual states j1 m1 j2 m2 are individual states individual states correct now you have coupled coupled means you are going to coupling uh, these two angular momentum so coupling will take place by only by means of tensor product so you have individual states so this is for j1 and this is for j2 so j1 tensor product with j2 okay so the final answer will be this one so we know that uh, uh, this expression we know already this is called the completeness correct completeness cut and bra of j1 j2 m1 m2 will give you identity matrix so we know already this okay the orthogonal condition is given by this expression using chronological delta function orthogonal condition okay if it is equal to 1 provided j1 equals j1 dash j2 dash equal to j2 m1 dash equal to m1 m2 dash equal to m2 okay so we know already this condition this is equal to 1 if this condition is satisfied the normalized normalized answer will be equal to 1 so we know already this inner product equal to 1 so these are things that we should know okay so this is for completeness we know already so i have given for uh, joint eigen states so this is for individual eigen states this is for joint eigen states so now we are going to have how many values it can accommodate so how many values so as we know that for j1 m1 goes from minus j1 to plus j1 the how many values it will take it will take 2 j1 plus 1 values the dimension of this one will be 2 j1 plus 1 dimension of second one will be 2 j2 plus 1 and your uh, your j for j2 m2 goes from minus j2 plus j2 okay for j1 k2 then we can have j2 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 2 minus 1 and goes on up to this so we have 2j plus 1 and 2j plus 1 this is for individual dimension okay now you are going to product these two for getting coupled one this is for uncoupled individual non interacting okay non interacting for for first electron this is for the first electron this is for the second electron dimension for the first electron dimension for the second electron for the angular momentum this is 2j1 plus 1 this is be 2j2 plus 1 you just multiply these two that will give you that will be the dimension for the coupled one so this is uncoupled one this is coupled one is it okay depends between these two so the state of combined system the coupled system is given by j1 j2 j comma m so you have to remember this one always j1 j2 j comma m individual system will be j1 m1 j2 m2 individual system the coupled one will be j1 j2 j comma m in most of the books we can find only j comma m okay provide because j1 j2 will be kept constant so that's the reason that they will avoid j1 and j2 most of the books we are also going to follow the same thing so it means the same thing means that you have kept j comma m kept j comma m because j1 and j2 are kept constant okay surely it will be constant is it okay so what is j1 j1 stands for your j1 square j2 means j2 square your small j means maximum value and minimum value one of the selection rules can you remember as i said so this is one of the selection rules so you have to remember those selection rules maximum value and minimum value okay for the interaction of uh, two angular momenta one will be parallel another one will be anti parallel so you have to remember so this stands for small j stands for this and small m stands for m1 plus m2 this is another selection rule okay so your total dimension will be just now i said product of these two your total dimension will be product of these two and your m goes from minus j2 plus j and this will be your m j1 plus j2 it goes on 
minus j2 plus j. So your ket jm means j1 plus j2 comma j1 plus j2 and this will be j2 minus j1 and goes on. Okay and so on up to here. And the total dimension will be 2j1 plus 1 multiplied by 2j2 plus 1. So as I said, j comma m will have basis, j1, j2, j comma also will have basis. It implies that uncoupled basis, okay, uncoupled basis for the uncoupled states will be exactly equal to the basis for the coupled, coupled one. Both will have same basis. Suppose the basis for uncoupled is 4, then basis for coupled also will be 4. So we will have 4 basis on either side. Okay. So both represent the same space, hence we can transform one basis into another, another basis. Suppose uncoupled, uncoupled one, we are going to make it into couple, we are going to transform from uncoupled to couple and space will be the same thing. Okay. So we can have the transformation, the space, same space. So j1, j2, j, m, the new basis will be j, m. Okay, so this is what I told you. This will be your coupled. So this will be individual one. So uncoupled one. Okay, so this is a individual one. So you have J1. Suppose you are going to apply the magnetic field in this direction. So J1 stands for the first electron and J2 stands for the angular moment of the second electron. And the dimension will be 2J1 plus 2J1 plus 1 multiplied by 2J2 plus 1. And this is for the coupled one. So this is for the uncoupled state. And this is for the coupled state. See again the coupled state will be j equals j1 plus j2. So we have added these two bases. Okay. And the formula will be 2j plus 1 j from j minimum to j maximum. Okay. So j goes from j minimum to j max. So now it means that here this is a multiplication. Okay. Here it is the addition. You just look at the summation. It says that this is addition. 2j plus 1. You will have to use j minimum and you will have to use j maximum, you will have to add. But here you are going to multiply. Both the bases will be same. We are going to look at one problem, small problem. So we can conclude that both the bases should be the same. From uncoupled to coupled, the basis will be the same. Only thing is your quantum number will change. Okay? We are going to have only different quantum numbers. So how to represent the coupled basis using? Uncoupled basis, what we call this as Klebs Cardan coefficients. So, this is achieved by Klebs Cardan coefficients. So, as I said, we are going to transform from one basis into another basis, from uncoupled basis to coupled basis through projection operator. And projection operators will have some values, those values are called Klebs Cardan coefficients. Okay? And we are going to make these values into matrix, surely it will be a unitary matrix. So, we will have unitary transformation. Okay. So, we will be looking slowly, one by one. So, now the next title will be Klebs Cardan coefficient. So, we are going to transform from one basis to another basis, from uncoupled to coupled basis. So, in physics, the Klebs Cardan coefficients are numbers. As I said earlier, Klebs Cardan coefficients are numbers. Okay. They are real numbers. And studies of angular moment are coupling in quantum mechanics. They appear as the expansion coefficients of total angular momentum eigenstates in the tensor product basis. So we are going to have only the tensor product basis and we are going to have projection operators and some values, some coefficients will be there. Those values are nothing but the expansion coefficients. They are nothing but Klebs Cardan coefficients. And it, it's used by, it was used by German mathematicians. So both uh, professors, scientists, uh, Alfred Klebs and Paul Garden, they studied only mathematics. Okay, they were mathematicians. In tensor products, in the irreducible vector space, they used this one and in uh, symmetry, inversion symmetry. They used this idea in inversion symmetry. Of course, angular momenta is connected with the symmetry, so which we studied earlier. Okay, so they used irreducible vector space in the sense that before coupling, then after coupling also the space will be the same what we call this as irreducible vector space. Okay, The space in which both the coupling will take place in the same space. So any transformation from one space into another space which belongs to the same space. 
okay so you have uncoupled that will take place in one space then after the transformation this will become into coupled space correct coupled one and this also will have the same space so irreducible vector space what we call this is the addition of angular momenta can be read directly from this approach as spherical harmonics of course spherical harmonics in which v of r vector equal to vr the magnitude will be the same direction alone will change okay so that's why i said the projection operator will change not j j will be kept as constant magnitude will be constant whereas the projection operator that alone will change m alone will change so because we have going to consider as spherical harmonics or eigen functions of total angular moment and projection on the axis projection on the axis is nothing but your m okay m and the integrals corresponding to the gilbert space as inner product okay so that we know already so we are going to consider two systems two physically different angular momenta j1 and j2 examples include the spin and the orbital angular momenta two more electrons and this belongs to one subspace and j2 belongs to another subspace you are going to product these two 2j1 plus 1 multiplied by 2j2 plus 1 they will also belong to the same space okay gilbert space so this will be individual one and this will be after coupling so we are going to have only tensor product okay now j1 has 2j plus 1 dimension and j2 has 2j2 plus 1 this has a basis j1 j1 m1 this has a basis j2 m2 okay so we know already joint eigen states and this will have joint eigen for this one and your m1 goes from minus j1 to plus j1 m2 goes from minus j2 plus j2 we know already so this is for the first space and this is for the second space you have the tensor product and the answer will be v3 that also will belong to the same space okay so then the tensor product of these two spaces these two spaces will be 2j1 plus 1 vector product of 2j2 plus 1 so this is your dimension so of course this is individual one you are going to have the vector product and that will answer will be coupled basis okay the total number of total no the total number of total angular momentum i can say is necessarily equal to the dimension of v3 okay is it okay suppose uh, if you have a dimension 2 if you have dimension 3 the answer will be 6 so something like that we are going to find out now small pan suppose if we take uh, this is a coupled one correct right? 2j plus 1 as i said coupled one this will be uncoupled one individual state individual states we are going to add this to see here this is addition this is the tensor product okay 2j1 multiplied by 2j2 plus one is a tensor product uncoupled basis now the resultant will be coupled one now summation of summation exists so summation means we have to go with j minimum to j maximum we are going to add okay we will calculate now if we consider j1 equal to 1 j2 equal to 1 by 2 okay for simple problem we are going to have from uncoupled to coupled one so we are going to consider j1 as 1 j2 equal to 1 by 2 now what about uh, first we will take right hand side 2j1 plus 1 the answer will be 2j plus 1 so j1 is 1 the answer will be 2 plus 1 answer will be 3 now we will go for j2 2j2 plus 1 the answer will be 2 multiplied by 1 by 2 plus 1 answer will be 2 so product of these two will give you 6 so it means that 6 dimension 1 uncoupled one correct we have multiplied okay now we will calculate we will go for now left hand side what are the possible values for j okay what are the possible values of j as i said maximum and minimum so maximum will be j1 plus j2 minimum will be j1 minus j2 so 1 plus 1 by 2 will be maximum value 1 minus 1 by 2 will be minimum value is it okay very simple one so j1 minus j2 to j1 plus j2 this will be minimum value this will be your maximum value so you will get 1 minus 1 by 2 will be 1 by 2 One plus one by two will be three by two. Is it okay? Now left hand side goes like this: two j plus one. Correct. So we have we have to substitute minimum value plus we have to substitute maximum value. Is it okay? So it implies that two j plus one 
plus 2j plus 1 one is for minimum another one is for maximum if you substitute 2j plus 1 so this will give you 1 by 2 that will give you 2 here 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2 will give you 4 2 plus 4 6 again see 6 dimension 1 6 basis same thing so before coupling and after coupling the basis are same the dimension is the same is very clear from the exam is it okay so thus the six dimensional tensor product representation decomposes as the direct sum of the two dimensional representation two dimensional representation and the four dimensional representation and the four dimensional representation is it okay now we just now we looked at the dimension now we will go for uncoupled basis so j1 equal to so earlier we are talking about only dimension okay dimension are the same dimension is the same here we have six dimension here also we have six dimension uncoupled to coupled now we are going to look into the the in terms of basis for the uncoupled basis and the coupled basis whether basis are same or not so earlier we are talking about dimension now we are going to talk about in terms of basis is it okay so now we will go for for a given value of j1 the same same thing j1 as 1 j2 as 1 by 2 let us find the possible values of j we will we will find out so let j1 and j2 so there will be three possible values for uh, for for j1 equal to 1 three possible values j1 equal to 1 your m1 will be minus j2 plus j correct minus j2 through 0 so this will be 1 0 minus 1 so three possible values for j1 for m1 what are for j equals 1 by 2 j2 equal to 1 by 2 your m will be minus j2 plus j so this will be 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 so m2 will be 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 this is okay so now you so now this is our individual states correct so now we will go for j1 j2 m1 m2 come on it's very simple one 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 by two this will be a first one one minus one by two second one zero one by two third one zero minus one by two fourth one minus one one by two fifth one minus one minus one by two six one so six possible possible base states so six are there so you just see here this will be your j1 this will be your j2 and this will be your m1 this will be m2 and again this will be your j1 j2 m1 m2 you see here 1 comma 1 by 2 1 comma 1 by 2 in all the other bases 1 comma they are the same so as i said earlier j will not change m alone will change can you remember as i said because the direction alone will change so with projection vector the direction alone will change b of r vector equal to v of r spherical harmonic so that's the reason so j is constant m alone will change so that's why see m changes here m1 m2 m1 m2 m1 m2 how many uncoupled bases are there <coughs> six see you can count it 1 2 3 4 5 6 so six are there corresponding m1 equal to minus 1 m2 equal to minus 1 will basis is it okay now we will for go for coupled basis <coughs> coupled basis j max we have already calculated <coughs> your j1 equal to 1 j2 equal to 1 by 2 what is your j max j1 plus j2 correct j1 plus j2 so you add this to that will give you 3 by 2 so that will be your maximum value j max value what about your m value corresponding m value minus j2 plus j correct so that will be minus j2 plus j 3 by 2 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 Minus three by two. How many bases are there? Four bases now. Now for j minimum, one minus one by two. J one equal to one. J two equal to one by two. So you have one minus one by two. J one minus j two. How many bases? So how many m will be there? M will be minus j two plus j. So one by two minus one by two. So two bases. Okay. So as I said earlier, this base state refers the complete one. That is uh, coupled one. J comma M, and your J goes from J max to J minimum, and M will be your another selection rule, which is nothing but M equals M1 plus M2. 
So totally we have six basis values are there. Is it okay? So this is for coupled basis J comma M for the coupled basis. Uncoupled basis is J1, J2, M1, M2. Okay, we are going to transform transform from uncoupled to coupled basis through unitary transformation. So this is the idea through projection operators. We we'll have some values. Those values are called clutch cardinal coefficients. That's all. Is it okay? <coughs> Now, <coughs> any quantum state can be written as a linear combination of these vectors. We know already capital C equals summation over I C I C I. We know already. So C one C one plus C two C two. We know already. Okay. So clutch cardinal coefficient transformation between the bases, uncoupled to coupled bases. Okay. So that we call this as Uh, clutch cardinal coefficient. Some coefficients will exist. So, like C i, so like C i, because C one, C two, C three. So they are all clutch cardinal coefficients from uncoupled to coupled one. Now, you just have a um, bra vector on psi on both sides. Okay, multiply on both sides by bra psi i. Come on, just listen to me. Capital psi equals C i psi i multiply on both sides by bra psi i so you have psi i capital psi will give you c i bra psi i cap psi i and of course this become this becomes one so your c i will be psi i psi okay bra psi i with cap psi so he will be bra psi i cap psi so one basis to another basis we are going to look into now this psi equals c i psi i the answer for c i is nothing but psi i Say, is it okay? The answer for C I already we have found out. So substitute here. This C I is here. We are going to consider C I is nothing but you are J one J two M one M two, and your capital C I is not nothing but J comma Y. So this will be your coupled one, and this will be your uncoupled one. We are going to transform one basis to another basis. So your C I will be J one J two M one M two. Your capital C will be J comma Y. You substitute now. So you will have instead of C, you will have J comma Y. Okay, C J comma Y. So summation over. Now you have now C I. Okay, instead of C I, you can write C I bra J one J two Y one Y two. Your capital C will be J comma Y. C J comma Y. And your Small si i, cat si i will be j1, j2, m1, m2. Is it okay? So they are all individual states, individual states. So multiplication of j1 and j2, multiplication of tensor product of the first basis and second basis. So they are all coefficients, correct? Exactly. Si i is the expansion coefficient, so they are all coefficients. And your j comma m is the joint, joint eigenstate. This is for the coupled one. Okay, your j will be J1 plus J2, and your M will be M1 plus M2, and of course your J will be J max and J minimum, J1 plus J2 and J1 minus J2. So transforming from one basis to new basis, this is old basis, individual basis from new basis J comma Y, okay, J comma Y. So instead of adding J1 plus J2, we can transform from one basis into another basis. So we are going to see now. So your J M. J M as we have written psi equals C I psi I, so your J M can be written as your expansion coefficient with cat psi one. So we so we know already this. So now just take the bra on both sides of J one J two M one M two. So that will give you bra J one J two M one M two cat J M will give you this one. And of course if it is normalized, this becomes one. This becomes one. So your C J M. Comma m1 m2, which is equal to this one. Is it okay? Just take the complex number, complex value of this. So complex value of this means just you have to interchange. So we have interchange. Okay, multiply these two. You just multiply this. So that will give you this answer. Multiply these two, that will give you answer will be one. So this answer will be your c mod c square, which is equal to one. So this becomes one. So it is complete having orthonormal basis. So they are all orthonormal basis. Okay. 
Any doubt on the slide? Slide number 75. Any doubt? Okay. 